Today we are going to nitrate some bromobenzene in order to make nitrobromobenzene which is not explosive but useful. Why did I choose to nitrate bromobenzene and not something like chlorobenzene or benzaldehydes? Well, in comparison to nitrochlorobenzene, nitrobromobenzene is non-toxic, at least somewhat safe, and it's also more useful than nitrobenzaldehyde in my opinion. Only a few chemicals are needed for this preparation. Nitration mixture, bromobenzene, distilled water and ethanol for the recrystallization. This nitration will best proceed at 30 up to 35 degrees Celsius. You would normally conduct this in an ice bath, but I chose a different way to cool this. The bromobenzene was added in portions to avoid overheating. My way to cool it, add liquid nitrogen, it's fast and clean. Because of the directive effect of the bromo substituents, we mainly get para and orthobromonitrobenzene. The product will contain about 70% of para bromonitrobenzene, 30% of orthobromonitrobenzene, and less than 1% of meta bromonitrobenzene. Once nitration was finished, it was time to isolate the product. Everything was added to a beaker containing ice water. The beaker still containing some product was rinsed using distilled water. A vacuum filtration was quickly performed and the product was rinsed with a lot of distilled water. We don't have to worry about it dissolving because it is poorly soluble in water. To make the product even purer, it was recrystallized from ethanol. I actually had to make the nitrobromobenzene two times because the first time I did this, I left it on the hot plate too long while recrystallizing and the product turned into some nice tar. This time I was more careful and we got a nice recrystallized product. Once crystallized out, another gravity filtration was performed and in the end we were left with 18 grams of what's mostly para-bromonitrobenzene. I hope you liked today's video and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe.